Hello, welcome. If you've just landed, um, before I ended the live stream and got rid of you all, um, I was training a neural network to detect clapping like this, um, just basically so that we can uh, activate Jarvis with instead of Jarvis, um, which is an awesome project. I've wanted to do this for ages. I have started it before I got a working neural network detecting whether I was clapping, um, but I just never got any further than that. So I thought, tell you what, I will re rewrite this on a live stream and uh, walk you guys through what it's doing. So what am I actually doing? I'm using something called a convolutional neural network, um, which is traditionally very, very good for image tasks. They're very good at detecting the changes in images or patterns in images. So convolutional neural networks, really, really good at that. They're used for like um, object detection and self-driving cars use convolutional neural networks um, because they're really good at looking at stuff and picking out the pattern. So the idea is that you take a bunch of um, audio files of clapping and a bunch of audio files of not clapping and then you say, hey, neural network, here's a clapping audio file, here's a not clapping audio file, and over time, it looks at those audio files as images using something called a spectrogram, which is like a graph of the image. So it's looking at images all the time. I'll show you a spectrogram. So here, on the other live stream, I recorded a bunch of background noise. Um, this is a spectrogram, not the top one, the bottom one. That is a spectrogram. It's a um, display of the image. It's a mapping of the image. You are looking at the audio and the different colors represent different peaks in the audio. So this is background noise. Um, if I, I can't play this to you guys, but it's basically just me talking on the live stream, but it's also things like city background noises that I played off of YouTube on my other laptop. And you can see all this background noise looks really different. Every single sample looks really busy. These hot spots, that's loud peaks in audio, and these black spots, that's low quiet. Um, so in these, where I was talking less, there is more quietness in down here. We have some peaks. So now let's look at the clap samples. And you can see the clap samples look very different. So you have these peaks that are really, really obvious. Let's look at another one, see if we can get a better one. Ah, oh, this is background noise. Ah, oh, what did I do? Did I accidentally move the background noise into claps? Yeah, I think I did. What did I do? Okay, let's just look in here, the backup. Yeah, so this is a clap, this is a clap sample. So you can see that is me going like that. On the other live stream, I recorded a hundred claps um, and a hundred samples of background noise, but that's not gonna be enough. We have to do something called augmenting, which is what I was doing before we got really interrupted by bad internet. Um, and so I'm gonna hopefully pick off there, um, pick off, start off where we left off, I don't know, pick up where we left off. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna basically run every single audio file through this augment.py script. And the augment.py script does two things. It pitch shifts the audio file and creates new files with higher and lower pitches. Um, and it's gonna change them by plus two semitones and minus two semitones. So we're gonna get four new samples from every single clap. And then it does another thing, it changes the volume of the sample as well. And we're gonna get a few different, we're gonna get plus 10 and minus 10 of each sample. So we're gonna explode the 100 samples we recorded into a bunch more samples so that the network has more to learn from. The reason the volume is really important and the pitch is really important that we change is it teaches the neural network different types of claps without having to record them all. So a clap close to the microphone and far away from the microphone is the exact same as changing the volume up and down. So if we change the volume up and down, then hopefully the neural network will be able to detect far away claps and close up claps. So hopefully that's me done with the clapping. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've just started learning to code, welcome to the insanity. I wish you the best of luck. Okay, where were we? So this just takes every file in a folder. If it doesn't have the word shifted in already, then we shift it. So I believe I can run this.
Ah, let me just uh, sort this out. So what is this? This is background noise. And these are claps. So I think I just moved background noise into here. Yeah. Can you put a voice changer to a character on Carter Chat? Um, not currently, but that would be pretty cool if you could. It's a good feature. Maybe we will build it at some point. If you like the idea of being able to clap and turn on an AI system like Tony Stark, why not hit the like button? Give this live some love. It's my first live like this in a long time, and I think it's the first time I've ever done any good live coding here on TikTok. So if you're enjoying this and you find this interesting, let me know. We are teaching an AI to detect clapping. Just like Tony Stark and Iron Man 2, wake up daddy's home. That's the scene. Go Google it. So that's what we're building. Let's do it. So how do I run this? I can't remember. Oh, what? oh, we didn't pip install. Yeah, we did, surely. Okay. There were some things from last time that I forgot to install, so let's get this out of the way. Happy New Year, thank you so much. It's not a bit late, it's only the second here in England. So, thank you. Happy New Year. Try that again. Oh. You're going, hope you succeed. Thank you. I can't even put in a path at the moment. Hmm, <laughs> that's really weird. Oh. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to edit the script. Okay.
So first we're going to run this script on all of the, uh, on all, every single one of those claps we just recorded. And you'll, and I'll, I'll just expand the tree so that you can see this happening in real time. So the moment we have zero to 100 chunks, these are our claps and don't worry, we have them backed up. We're basically going to overwrite all of these and we're going to expand our data set. We need more samples and we can do that using something called data augmentation. Hopefully this works. Ooh. Yeah, here you go. You can see them all coming through now. You look how many more data samples we have. We have tons of samples now. I believe we have 900 samples after that. So we pitch shifted, we also changed the volume. So now for every sample, there's subtle differences in here. This is the same sample. Uh, this is the same sample. This is the same sample. So these have very subtle differences. Can you see at the top, at the top, you can see the changes in color. That's actually the change in audio. This is a terrible example. It's just just all yellow, but at the top there, you can see that the, the audio is different. Okay, so we've augmented, we've basically just created 900 different clapping sounds for the network to listen and learn from. And if I scroll all the way to the top, we've done that. Now we need to do the same with the background noise that we recorded. So I have a hundred samples here. I'm going to just change this to background noise. Clear this so that you guys can see it a bit more. And we're going to run it. And this is now going to go through and it's going to change. And you can see this happening in real time. Let's see if we can catch up with it. No, it's going too fast. It's finished already. But now we have 900 samples of background noise. So this hopefully is enough for the network to learn from. Now it's time to actually code up the network. So like I said, we are, we are gonna use a convolutional neural network and I am just gonna, like the rest of this project, copy and paste the one from before and pretend that it is new. So somewhere in one of these files, is the model. Here it is. This is the audio classifier. And it's just an, a convolutional neural network with a bunch of layers. It actually might be a bit over the top, but it's fine. I think it will work. Let's put it in here. And we need to import a bunch of things in a minute. Oh man, I hate this laptop. So we basically just have some linear layers, some pooling layers. The pooling layers are just compressing the amount of data that is in every single sample. It's too much noise for, not audio noise, but too much like bad data for the model to learn from. So these layers help. Um, but this is the neural network. It's written in PyTorch and it's 26 lines long. How crazy is that? Okay. Uh, forgive me, it is late. Import torch. That's that one. And then we need this one. I think that's everything for this file. Yes. Okay, so that's the model. It's ready. I'm not going to touch anything. I think this will perform perfectly. Hopefully. Uh, we can get rid of that. Look how neat that is. Lovely. Okay, let's move on. Um, we have our model file. The next thing we need is our data loader. This is going to be responsible for loading all of those audio files out of those folders. So background noise and claps, assigning them labels. So class one is going to be clapping, class zero is going to be background noise. And I have a data loader ready to go in here, which is this. Okay. 
and I think we're going to need all of this. No, we didn't need those. So this class is responsible for getting the wave files for claps and background noise from these folders, loading them, and then uh, it has labels in here where it's assigning the labels for each one. That's another import we need. Import OS. Uh, what else does it do? This actually helps me to dis to uh, describe what's going on while we're while we're all doing this. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is so annoying. This mouse is really, really frustrating. Okay, so this little helper function just loads the WAV file. The important thing is this audio audio dataset class. So we load all of the WAV files for noise and all of the WAV files for clap, and then we assign labels to them. And then every time our network uh, goes through a training cycle, it's basically gonna get items in batches from these folders, but before it can process the audio files, we need to convert them into the Mel spectrogram, which we can do if we import Torch Audio. Okay. So Torch Audio, I love. Um, ooh, where does T come from? I can't remember. Oh, transforms. Okay. So what happens every single time we uh, request an item um, from our data loader class, what's, what's happening is it's loading the waveform as a um, something, I believe. I think it's a NumPy array. And then it generates this MEL spectrogram. And the MEL spectrogram is just like any other spectrogram that I showed you guys before. So it's this. It's a visual representation of the audio. And in here, it's going to create a, a visual representation of the audio, but it's gonna cut off all of the stuff that humans can't hear, that our ears can't pick up. And in this case, I'm just using this because it's less data. Um, but actually this is really, really useful for speech recognition. Um, we're not doing speech recognition, we're doing clap recognition. So you could make the argument that when you clap, there are frequencies that the human ear can't pick up, but a computer can, and we should learn from those two. But in this case, I'm gonna just use the mouse spectrogram. I actually think you probably get the same performance out of both, but I've only ever tried with the mouse spectrogram. Okay. If you're enjoying the stream so far, a like would mean the world. Thank you so much for the roses and for the gifts. It means the world. Thank you so much. If you're new here and you have no idea what's going on, if you've ever seen the second Iron Man movie, there's a sick scene where he's is at the start of the film. He's sat in his workshop and he goes, Wake up, daddy's home. He doesn't say Jarvis, he claps. The music starts immediately and all of his screens start powering on. And the only way you can achieve that in the real world is by training something called an audio classifier to say that is a clap or is that is not a clap. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're training a neural network to detect whether this is a clap or not. Okay, so I've got my claps and I've got my background noise. Now I'm coding up something called a data loader that's gonna go into those folders of files. It's gonna read all of the audio files back and it's gonna turn them all into images of the audio. So basically they're plottings of the audio frequencies. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a visualization that people use to represent audio in many different scenarios, but we can use it um, as basically a way of showing a convolutional neural network, which is very good at seeing. It's the same thing that powers self-driving cars. It's a type of AI that can see really well. And the reason it can see really well is because it's very, very well suited to looking at patterns in visual data and looking over an image um, and picking up different patterns, picking up different, what we would call features in AI. So it might be hard edges, rough edges. It might be the way that the pattern evolves over time. All of those things get learned by the convolutional neural network. And with claps, there's a clear difference 
in uh, background noise and foreground noise and, and, and claps, right? So let me show you a clap visual. So this is a clap. You can see here, that's one clap. And this is obvious to the human eye that there is something different at the start of this audio file than at the end. You can see up here in the waveform, it's the same. There's something that happened here. Now what our eyes are doing, what our brains are doing, we've evolved over thousands of years, millions of years, in order to be able to know that this looks different to this. But the neural network, it doesn't know anything about the rest of the world, but it will be able to tell that there is something different in the pattern here for a clap than, let's just look at some background noise, than this. This is obviously very different. This is a very different shape and look to something like this. You can see background noise and a clap. There's some, there are some differences. There's some subtle differences as well that the human eye cannot pick out, but the convolutional neural network will be able to. Oh, what's the extension? Okay. You love my jacket. Thank you. It, yeah, it's sick. It's actually got the um, original Apollo, um, like, diagrams on it and then on the back it's got the Apollo mission uh, like path that they took um, yeah I love this thing yeah okay so we're gonna teach a network how to tell the difference I have to remind myself I get sidetracked I get so excited building this stuff <laughs> bye 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 um, okay oh yeah the extension the extension right what is the extension? Audio preview. It's called audio preview. And it's just very, very useful if you're working with audio data. Audio preview. It's free. Yeah. Did you get it? Quick, get a screenshot. <laughs> okay. Time up. Right. So where were we? We've written our data loader. We're able to load um, audio files and turn them into MEL spectrograms. And then what we do is we basically normalize this male spectrogram because there's so much variance in the noise data that we collect. Um, that could be really confusing and that's a lot to learn. So what we do is we normalize everything so then it's just easier for the network to learn about. Um, then we just turn back, we basically send back the labels and we send back the, um, the spectrogram. So we have here, we're returning the spectrogram, which is the thing you've just seen, and the label. So is it a clap or not a clap? zero for not a clap, one for clap. Okay, so we've got the data set, we've got the, um, we've done the augmenting, we've got a data loader, we've got our neural network all set up. Next, it's time to write our train loop. And this is why I wanted to reload it, re remake everything, because before my train.py seems to have just turned into everything. Um, so I'm hoping tonight I can make things maybe a little bit more clean and easier to read. Okay, so let's put this over here. This is old. This is new. And I'm going to go with... Oh yeah, we just need to import everything from the stuff we've just done. So we need um, from our data loader. We want to import our audio data set and from, ooh, where did we get that from? What's that, from torch, utils.data, random split, nice. Thank you, Copilot, and data loader. Ah, yes, Copilot coming in clutch. Awesome. Thank you so much for the roses, it means the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully you find that extension. Okay, cool. So what's happening here? So here, let's scroll, let's get rid of this. We need to change this. So this is the path for our, um, for our noise samples, which is gonna be data, background noise, and data claps like this. Then we're creating the data set that you saw before. Then we are setting our train size. So what we wanna do is we wanna take 10% of our data, so about 90 samples from both, um, from both sides. 
and we're going to put that aside so that we can then um, basically evaluate from from that data. So we're going to train on 90% of it and 10% of it we're not going to train on so that we can then test the network. Is it very good at detecting a clap or not? Um, on data we know it hasn't seen, so we know that it's able to generalize away from its training data. Very important. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, otherwise you just get a network that's just learning from uh, its own data and it's testing itself on its own data. You definitely want to hide some data from the network while it's training so that it can evaluate itself on, on fresh data. And we'll get to that a little bit later. So we do a random split. So what it's basically doing is it's loading all of the samples, jumbling them all up, then it's doing a random split for the 90%, uh, 90% 10%. And that's a percentage that you can like move around. Can I do a room tour? Um, not tonight, this place is a mess. Um, okay, so we've got our data loaders. We're gonna do batch sizes of 32. So this means that the, the model can actually learn from 32 samples at a time. So we don't have to do one after another. We can send them through in batches. So it's able to do more. We're basically able to send more data to the GPU. Um, okay, so next, to co-pilot, that's a great idea. Let's define a model. Um, so our model is gonna be an audio classifier. Uh, I think there might be some parameters we need to send. Um, no. Um, okay, so we're now getting to the point where things got messy before. So we just need to import our architecture. Audio. Nice. And then we want to do our loss function and our optimizer. Um, so this again. Goodness me. Okay, fine. Copilot, you can just do the rest. <laughs> um, I don't want to do this though. We want cross entropy loss. And we haven't imported that. And we had a weight decay of 0.1, yeah. Okay. So a lot of this stuff, um, it's basically helping the model to not uh, overfit and not to, to not become too sensitive to different uh, the different classes. Um, honestly, if you get the basic pipeline of audio goes in, it gets turned into some sort of visual representation and then the model is looking over that and then predicting um, a new sample, then that is 90% of what you need to know if this is new to you. Okay, so the optimizer is done. Keeping things simple tonight. Maybe we could do a couple of these, uh, these nights where we're just trying to get the most out of this network. Um, number of epochs, so, okay, I'm gonna go with five because I don't like the number six. Don't know why I chose six. Um, and then it's time to train the model. So we're gonna write our training loop. Um, so we're gonna do, uh, basically for every epoch, in range, let's see if Copilot's got this one. Yep. Oh wow, look, it's written our entire thing. I don't want to write the entire thing with just Copilot. That is boring. Let's write let's write it badly and then let the AI correct us afterwards. Okay. So we're basically going to load in from our train loader. So for every sample in our training set, so that's the 90%, not the 10% we've left behind, we are going to get, we're going to do something with every single batch in our training, training data set. So we're going to get 32 inputs and 32 labels, and then we're going to pass it into our network. So first of all, we're going to do um, optimizer. 
zero grad, and then we're going to do. Then we pass our inputs into the model and we get our outputs from the model. So what happens at this stage? Basically, uh, let's just click into here. We can't for some reason. This is what calls the forward function. So basically X at that point is our inputs and you can see X gets passed through all of these different layers. They all have different jobs and what's coming out the bottom of all of those different layers, those layers are all learning different things, they're all learning different patterns, and they're set up in a specific order so that the data doesn't get lost or compressed, and hopefully they are the correct size as well for the size of our samples, but we'll find out shortly. Um, and then what comes out the, the back is you get an output of, of the model. Um, and so at first the output is really, really bad, but as time goes on, the output hopefully gets better. Um, okay, so we've got our model outputs. Uh, then we want to calculate our loss. Um, and so what's happening is the... Um, the loss calculation is basically saying, okay, this is the prediction of the network. This is what the network thinks this input audio is. It thinks it's a clap or it thinks that it's background noise. And then we calculate whether that's wrong or not. And then we basically go and update the network. And we do that with these, these guys. Which laptop is this? Oh, this laptop is a nightmare. That's what it is. So this is a PC specialist, like custom build. Um, and it's like way too much power and way too much of a small form factor. So it just overheats. It's got an overclock button that turns on every time you turn the PC on. And there's no way to deactivate it that I found. Um, also, it defaulted to 5 gigahertz, the, the Wi-Fi card was default to 5 gigahertz and um, really difficult to turn back to 2.6 or whatever the, like, the default Wi-Fi band is. Um, and so earlier tonight I realized that I have been using this laptop on really low megabytes per second at home for like months um, because I don't have like 5 gigahertz band Wi-Fi at home. So the laptop doesn't like auto switch back, it's just trying to get five giga i don't know how it's doing it but now i have like way higher i was on two megabytes a second guys no wonder the stream failed the first time anyway if i hadn't done a stream you guys wouldn't have pointed it out and i would still be using super slow internet i just thought the laptop was slow but actually <laughs> actually it was it was the wi-fi card the whole time yeah not not fantastic um but, but I still love it. Like it's, it's nice to have a GPU on the go that you can send little training jobs to. Um, and, uh, and it's also nice to just have it for like game gaming. Um, at Carter, we have a games night and uh, every week we, we basically stay behind one of the days and we play video games and we eat pizza. It's an awesome life. And so this is my chosen gaming machine, which is super fun. Okay, how am I doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Okay, so what's going on? So we basically, for every single, uh, we, we have this number of epochs. So how many times are we gonna go over the data set? I have chosen the number five. I have plucked that out, out of thin air. For every, for five times over, we're gonna look at every single item in the data set in batches of 32. So for five times in a row, we're gonna go through the entire data set, 32 items at a time. We're gonna send the um, pictures of the audios, the spectrograms of the audio into the network. And we're gonna ask it to predict whether it is clap or whether it is background noise. And then we're gonna see how well the network did at, at that, was it right, was it wrong? How wrong was it? And if it was wrong, or was it right, was it right? We provide feedback, and this is how neural networks learn. They basically learn from from error, so from feedback. How lossy is the network? And the whole job is to kind of minimize that that loss over time, and the 
the idea is that the better those predictions are that come out of the model, the closer you are to a model that has learned the thing you're trying to learn. So for every epoch, we are going to print a training loss. And then we are going to do a very, very important part. This is super annoying. Yeah, we've gone super like cyberpunk retro style music tonight. Hopefully you guys like it. Where is Jarvis? We're building something for Jarvis right now. Okay. What was I saying? Okay, yeah, so now it's time. So for every epoch, we want to do basically a validation of the network on data it's never seen before. So we know how accurate it is on data that it's seen, um, but we don't know how accurate it will be on new data that it's never seen. And so every single epoch, um, I'm going to have it run a model evaluation on um, that 10% that we kept behind. So we have, this is super annoying. I don't know whether you guys can see the live chat. Yeah, you can, you can, okay. You guys can see the live chat. Maybe I should move it over here. So over here, we have the old script and the old script was basically doing exactly what we want to do. So it basically takes all of those samples from the 10% asks the model, the current state of the model, to predict, is it a clap, not a clap, and then it counts every time it was correct, every time it was not correct, and then we figure out from that how bad the model is at predicting things, and hopefully that gets better over time. If we start to overfit, that might actually get start to get worse again, but let's, let's have a look. So I'm gonna just, again, blindly copying, this seems to be the vibe of the night. Blindly copy what past Hugh did. You guys can go back over here now. Uh, what do I usually play? Usually um, at games night we'll play Mordhau, Valorant, and uh, any like niche indie games that people can recommend. Um, although the team's growing now, so we're actually like looking for games that can facilitate larger like team matches and things, so yeah. Okay. You remember my first few di videos on TikTok? Thank you so much. It's great to have you around. Thank you so much. Um, if you like the live stream, just double tap, get those likes up. It means the world to push the live out there. Get people consuming coding content late at night. That's what we need them to be consuming, not memes and things. Come on, this is way more interesting. Okay, so this is a validation phase. Copilot is absolutely right. Okay, so we basically here are taking the, um, we're, we're turning off training mode and we're just validating. So this is a little bit more efficient for larger training runs. Probably wouldn't make much difference with a network this size. Um, we calculate the loss just like we do in training. So what are we doing? So we're taking batches of 32 um, from that 10% of the data that we didn't train on. And then we are running all of those inputs and labels through the model again. We're calculating the loss or how how lossy is the, is the model. Um, and we are basically appending the losses to this list this time. So this is slightly different. Every single batch of 32, we are appending the losses um, and then we are going to uh, figure out what the sum of those losses is, and then we basically that becomes our validation loss. Uh, what else? God, it's been a while since I've seen this. What else are we doing? Then we ask the model to predict the correct classes, um, and the, its best guess is what we're using here. So we're not we're not using like a confidence. Um, we are asking it to have a best guess on every single audio sample that is being shown. Um, is this a clap? Is this not a clap? And uh, we then take that prediction, whether it's right or wrong, and we update this count, basically. So if it's correct, then we update the count. Uh, every prediction, we also 
increase this total predictions and then from that we can basically work out what percentage of the predictions we made were correct, what percentage of the predictions we made were wrong. So yeah. Where can we learn to code like you? The internet! That's where I learned. Um, I think I started learning to code when I was 10 from books. Um, but and, you, and I still have a bunch of coding books lying around, but to be honest, if you're reading about coding, a lot of it, um, other than the basics, changes so often that it's better to just dive right in with a project where you feel a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit out of your depth, and start pulling things apart and breaking things. Um, and yeah. And also, use ChatGPT. Like, I cannot stress this enough. If you're trying to learn to code, just use ChatGPT and ask it questions. Don't say, give me the code. Say, what about this code? Um, uh, let's let's try it, right? I'll show you right now. Why is, why is it better to learn to code with AI? Well, I can do something like this and be like, you know what? I don't understand this thing. Um, ah, what's the, what is, <laughs> okay, yeah. So I have GitHub Copilot installed. This is like ChatGPT, it's just built into my code editor. And I can select a piece of code and I can say, hey, you know what, explain this, um, explain this to me like I'm 10 years old. And it's going to look at the code I've selected and it's going to start to explain it to me in a really, really basic way that I can um, understand. And uh, and you can see here, this is these bullet points, this is a <laughs> this I wish I had this when I was learning to code so you can learn from code by just asking ChatGPT to explain things to you like you're five um, I do this all the time I still do this all the time okay so we have this training loop now we're doing a validation phase and we're printing the validation and then the last thing we want to do at the end of all those epochs mm, yeah at the end of all the epochs once we've gone through everything, we want to save the model into the audio classifier path. And I believe that is everything. Should we see if we can get this to work? Okay, what is going on with this mouse? Okay. Let's see if we can get this to train. Ah, okay. We have not installed Torch Vision and we have not installed Torch Audio, I do believe I don't believe. Let's try and install that first. Will we be able to download it for free? Yeah, I'll open source this. Um, I won't open source the data sets, but I will open source the way I recorded everything earlier, the augment, all the code I'll, I'll whack up on GitHub. There is a link to my GitHub in TikTok. It's just not there yet. Um, so give me a second and I'll, I'll get this up. Your TikToks always give me motivation to code. Thank you so much, man. I hope you, uh, Code something awesome that you're proud of and that makes you happy. That's what I'm doing tonight. If you guys have any questions, now's a good time. We are installing a new version of PyTorch, apparently. Um, does Copilot cost to use? It does cost to use, um, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. Um, at my startup, we pay for everybody to have Copilot because the performance gain is so much higher. Um, and it's it's worth it. It's like twenty dollars a month, um, but you can use ChatGPT for free or Bing for free, and you can get like a ton of the value. It's just not in the editor. It can do some really awesome things though. Like let me let me flex with Copilot while we're installing all of this this stuff because you can do some just crazy stuff. So you could say like uh, I don't know, organize this in alphabetical order. That's not that crazy, is it, when I think about it? <laughs> These things that, uh, and you don't have to select just a piece of your code. Um, maybe we'll try something in a minute. Oh, it's slow, why is it so slow? 
Maybe I'm having internet issues again. You're a go backend dev. Can you give me a high level overview of what exactly PyTorch does? Yeah, so PyTorch, um, PyTorch is basically just a tool kit around like really basic mathematical operations. Um, and when you use them in the right way, you can build neural networks and do mathematical calculations. And so PyTorch is just like a toolkit. It's like a, yeah. Um, that's it, really. I don't know Go. I don't know whether there's an equivalent in Go. There probably is after this year. What's going on with this? We actually don't need these two. These are unused. What happened to, to Copilot? I think it might have died. Maybe this is slowing it down? Oh, here you go. You can have it in the side as well. Um, what's really nice is that it uses the context of what you've got open. So it always understands what's going on. And then you can do things like this. So this is the difference. This is why I love it compared to ChatGPT is you can like, you can take a piece of code and you can take its suggestion. You can click this button and it will just update it for you. Um, there you go. Alphabetical order. Um, should we just try, should we try and push it a little bit more? Let's see what it thinks about sending everything to the GPU. Um, so how would I send everything to the GPU? So now Copilot is going to look at the whole file and hopefully it's going to give me a suggestion. I will also ping it over here. Yeah, so now it's rewritten the entire file for me. And uh, should we just blindly trust it? Let's have a look through. What's it done? Um, so it's created a new variable. This is pretty standard stuff. Um, basically, if CUDA is available, if there's a GPU on board, um, then it will use CUDA. If not, it will use your CPU, which will be super slow. And then we have, hopefully, I can send, yeah, okay, so then down here in training, we're just sending all of the tensors that represent our data to the GPU before any um, calculations are done. Uh, and hopefully we're doing that evaluation two. Yeah, validation two, yep, cool. Uh, yeah. Should we just do it? Let's do it. Boom. Now it's been, now, now I can quit. If you're interested in, in AI, I would just recommend just like learning the very, very, very basic stuff and then skipping to like modern day stuff to keep you interested. There's a bunch of stuff in the middle that you can get caught on um, and led down a path that's like not boring. It's really important information to know, but you will be playing with like yesterday's technology. So I would say like, learn what a neural network is, learn how these calculations are done, how the weights are updated, all of that like basic stuff that can be done in any language. It can be Go, it can be anything else. Um, and then go and play with like Llama 2 or something that's crazy. Go and play with Hugging Face stuff that's super abstracted. Like you're not gonna see any of the inner workings. You're not gonna touch PyTorch at all. Like Hugging Face sits on top of PyTorch. Um, but it's going to keep you interested and then you can start to dive into like, okay, I want to train my first network from scratch. I'm going to try and do this. Uh, and if you are a reader and you like reading stuff, I have one book recommendation, which is this. This is neural networks from scratch in Python. It's a beast of a book. Um, it's written by a popular YouTuber and uh, and it was open source. It was an open source Google Doc for ages and then it actually got printed. Um, there is like an open source one you can just read as a PDF, I believe. 
and uh, it has lovely diagrams. It has these QR codes throughout that basically sh um, show you animated versions of what's happening in every layer of the, of the network, but it also writes things from scratch and spells it out. And it's so good for understanding the f fundamentals. So if you are gonna go deep, I'd recommend neural networks from scratch in Python. Wow, Torch is taking ages to install. I have no idea why. Okay. The Little Book of Deep Learning. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, I'm gonna get it. Oh, it's unavailable right now. Oh, it's unavailable right now, on Amazon at least. Okay, I, uh, you're currently programming your own voice assistant called Aiden, that's sick. Hopefully that goes well. So what's going on right now? We are, um, we've, we get rid of this. We have, what have we done? We've imported all of the other pieces of code that we've written tonight. So we've imported PyTorch, we've imported our data loader, we've imported our model, which is an audio classifier. This is a convolutional neural network. Um, and then we've imported a bunch of other helper classes for randomly splitting our data set and um, like a data loader. Okay. Then we basically choose the device that we want to send everything to. This is uh, this is Copilot's suggestion, and then we just basically tell it where the da data lives. So we say that all of the background noise lives in this directory, which is here, and all of the clap data. So me clapping, which you missed if you're on this live stream, you missed me sitting here for like five minutes clapping into the microphone to get some claps. And don't forget, we, we recorded a hundred samples, but we've augmented those samples, which means we've changed them. We've manipulated those samples. Um, so now we have 900 samples of each because we've pitch shifted them. And we've also changed the, the volume of those samples so that the model can learn the difference between a clap and a not clap, but also a clap, a loud clap, a quiet clap, and also different pitches. So we don't have to sit here for hours recording 900 samples. Of course, this model is super basic, and so it's not gonna be fantastic, but it's a good start. And we can usually get quite far by just changing the data we give it after this is all set up. So we can introduce maybe claps outside, clap inside, maybe claps with gloves on, all of that stuff. Um, maybe single claps in our background noise data set if we want the model to only detect double claps, things like that. Um, then we split the data set. So we basically um, took our data set as a whole and we took away 10% of the samples. One out of 10 samples gets put into a different bucket um, and we use that later. We hide those samples, those audio samples from the network. And that basically allows us at the end of training to give it a sample it has not seen, that we know it didn't train on, that it doesn't recognize, and say, hey, is this a clap or not a clap? Um, and so we know that it has to have learned something in order to get the right answer. Um, so our validation size is 10% and our training size is 90%, uh, but that, that can change. And uh, it might be that we want to increase to 95% or decrease to 85%. Um, we'll see how the model performs. Um, then we are actually making that random split and then we set up our data loaders. So our data loaders um, take that 90% and that 10% and they shuffle them. So we just want to shuffle the training. We don't care to shuffle the validation. Um, we shuffle it up. So it's not just like all the claps and then all the background noises. 
that can lead to problems when the model trains. Um, it's basically clap, background noise, clap, clap, background noise, just randomly shuffled up, just like a deck of cards. Then we initialize the audio classifier, which is our model from earlier. It's a convolutional neural network. And the reason we're using a CNN, where is the thing? It's in here. Look at this. Um, so the reason we're using this is that convolutional neural networks is the same technology behind self-driving cars. Self-driving cars, they have to look at a lot of stuff. And a convolutional neural network is very, very good at picking up visual patterns. So things that you can see with your own eyes. So the difference between a pink scarf and a blue scarf, but also the difference between uh, a spoon and a knife. Um, so visual patterns, it can be color, it can be shape, it can be brightness, all of those things. Convolutional networks are really good at figuring out the difference between those patterns and assigning labels. And as the data moves through the network, different layers of the neural network um, are basically learning different what we call features. So it might be hard edges, it might be colors, or it might be the shape of a logo. And what tends to happen is at the start of the network, you have simple stuff like hard edges or contrast. And at the end of the network, you have more complicated stuff. Um, but it's a bit of a black box as with all neural networks. So its job is to figure out what's different in our data, but we can have a go at this ourselves. If we go to our data, we can check it out. So this is background noise. And as you can see, it's very noisy. There's a, some sort of loud spot here. Um, and you can see this is also background noise, not very noisy because it's a bit darker. Um, and for every one of these samples, let's uh, I take two samples. So this is the same sample. This is the same sample twice. And you can see as I click between them, there's a subtle difference at the top here. Watch this blue. There's a subtle difference between these two samples and that, if I just drag this out a little bit more, the reason is this one is at volume zero. So that's the volume we recorded it and it's at, and it's been shifted zero. So it's not been shifted at all. This is the original sample. This one is um, minus 10 decibels quieter um, than this one. And then if we go to this one, the difference between this one isn't actually that visible on this graph. It might be the way that this is set up, but you can see here, uh, those numbers are changing. So we are on a different volume. And it's the same with all of these samples. So this is our background noise. But if we then go and look at claps, we have a very different looking data sample. So this is a clap. This is also a clap you can see there's a very short, loud peak um, at the end of this one. Let me move you guys out of the way. There's a clap at the end of this sample. Super important that the clap um, is, is in different places and it looks different. So we have single claps and double claps. This network is not gonna know the difference. In the movie, Tony goes and everything comes on. This one is just gonna detect any clap and it might get confused with other loud things like a thud or a click. Um, we haven't put those things in the background noise, so it's gonna, it might think that's similar enough to a clap that it is a clap. Um, we can improve that with different data. So let's have a look more at our claps. I wanna get a good sample to show you guys just how different and obvious these things are. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a clap. Um, if I now go to maybe let's have a look at mm -hmm. this is background noise. I've opened so many now, right? This is background noise. This is a clap. Can you see the difference? So what's our neural network going to learn? It's going to learn exactly what you can see, but it just needs so much more information. This is why humans are so amazing. You can look at this and you can look at this and you can know Ah, this represents audio, probably, and there's something different between these two samples. And if I said to you which one's the clap and which one's the background noise, without watching this live stream, if I just asked you this now, you would probably be able to know because you have all of that experience in your life. You've heard a bunch of different claps. You know that they are short bursts of noise. And so that example, wherever it is, 
this is definitely a clap, right? This is quite a slow clap because those two spikes are like far apart. Um, so it's me doing this over one second. That's a great sample of a clap. This is a great sample of background noise. So this is gonna be what we call class zero. This is gonna be what we call class one. Class one is a clap. Class one, class zero is background noise. And wow, this thing is nearly done installing. Thank you for entertaining me. Um, and if you look through our data set, so when I was recording this background noise with you guys, I had music, I stayed quiet for a couple of seconds, and uh, I also spoke to you. So it's heard speaking, it's heard music, it's heard um, background noise and whirs of computer fans and things like that. And we also played some city sounds from like a YouTube video. So it's heard a bit of like just random noise. It knows the difference. Um, it might not be enough to get really good results, but it should be enough to get something. Okay, I also have a backup in case I messed it up. Um, and you can see these are the original samples in here. We only had 99 of each, but it's super important that you back up your samples before you start pitch shifting them and changing the tone and all of that. Okay, so let's go back to where we were before in our training loop. So we've set up our model, which is our audio classifier. And we're gonna move the model to the GPU. We're gonna take the model and we're gonna put it on the GPU. This is super important because that allows PyTorch to send data to the model when it's on the GPU. So all of the, all of the calculations, all that computation is no longer gonna be done on your processor, it's gonna be done on your graphics processor, which is really good at one thing, which is processing lots of calculations in parallel rather than one after another. So when we want to send through batches of data or a lot of data all at once, we want to do a ton of different mathematical calculations all at the same time. GPU is really good for that. And that's why GPU is super expensive at the moment because the AI guys are all buying them for this. Then we are defining our, um, basically our criterion and our optimizer. So these are gonna help inform the model on um, how bad it is and then how it should improve. Um, and so we use this to calculate the loss, basically how bad is the model at doing its job. And then we take that information and we do something to the model. The model learns somehow. I won't explain that today, but essentially we take a bit of information from the output of the bad model then we send, we do something with it, we send that back through the model and we update a bunch of things inside and the model goes, ah, okay, now I'm going to do another cycle and we just keep doing that. It's called back propagation. We're basically updating these tiny little things called weights within the model. The model is going to mathematically learn to be better at its job. It's just mad that this actually works. And there's a bunch of extra parameters here um, that uh, just help with like robustness of the model. So we have learning rate. So this is like how far, how quickly does the model learn? Um, and if it learns too quickly, often it can miss and accidentally skip over the correct answer. So learning rate, changing the learning rate um, can slow down the model's learning or speed it up. Um, so number of epochs, we're gonna basically go over our data set five times. Ooh, it's finished installing. Shall we try and run this thing? What errors are we gonna get? We have a warning. Okay, let's see. Usually no news is good news. It's only gonna print something once we've finished our first epoch. That's boring, isn't it? Shall we, we should print something on every step. This is gonna make me feel way cooler. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna print on each batch. We're gonna print this. Nah, let's, let's print at the end where we can get some more information on our loss. And let's clear this and let's get it training. Hopefully we get something out. If not, then, ah yes, amazing. So now we're gonna see our training loss going mad. 
Um, and the idea is that this goes down over time, but because of the way I'm logging it, it's going to look like it's going like this. Um, hopefully those numbers get smaller, but the model is now training. It is now looking over all of those pieces of data and it is trying to predict whether it's a clap or not. And it's trying really hard. Um, and those calculations are all being done on the GPU, thanks to GitHub Copilot that helped us rewrite our code to send it to the GPU. Ah, oh, I love this stuff. I get so excited watching this happen. How do you speed up AI training? Just throw GPUs at it. Um, yeah, basically, but then once you have enough GPUs, I mean, if you look at what larger companies are doing now, they're networking together tens of thousands of GPUs. And so it turns into a networking issue where, especially for training a transformer neural network, you need a lot of data to move around really, really fast. Um, and so you end up spending millions on like networking and GPUs. But yeah, um, so it might be that you want to train on less data if you want to speed it up, but that's going to lead to a really bad quality model. Really want to give it as much data as possible and speeding up training um, is rarely the is rarely the, the goal. Um, and the reason is like you want a good output. And so if it takes twice as long to get an output that is twice as good, then it's pretty good. The, the new the new issue is like everybody's racing to get the same models and so meta and google and everyone they're probably a little bit concerned about speed right now um but i wouldn't be surprised if there's some crazy training runs that are going to take a year to complete going on at the moment we'll just have to wait and see just like anything throw money at it what am i making so we are basically training a neural network to detect whether someone is clapping or not into the microphone. So we're on the third epoch. Our accuracy, uh, our validation accuracy is 98%, um, which is suspiciously high. But who knows, maybe it's learned something. While we're doing this, should we code up a script that um, can actually help us test this thing? Okay. I think there's something from the version before. Uh, what would it have been? Live, what's this? Oh yeah, this is exactly what we want. So this is gonna allow us to test our model once it's saved live with our microphone. Hopefully that works when I'm on a live stream. I'm using the same microphone, but I think that this should work. Where is the learn model stored? Is there any storage involved? Yeah, so um, you'll see when we get to the end of this training cycle, and because this is such a short training cycle and it's, it's not high stakes, it's not costing millions, um, I'm just saving the model at the end. But these large companies and what we do at Carter Labs um, is you, you tend to train to save checkpoints through the training. So you end up with a bunch of different copies of the model, all with their own validation metrics, all with their own accuracy metrics, um, and then you pick the best one. So it might be that the, the last model version you save isn't actually the best one. You wanna rewind a little bit. And so you end up storing a lot of different versions of the model. And so imagine if you are training something that's like, I don't know, GPT-3 is 180 gigabytes. Um, so imagine like tons of different versions of that. You need a ton of ton of storage. I think this model is probably going to be about 100 megabytes. Um, and it could be a lot smaller than that, to be honest, with the, with a bit of optimization. So um, this isn't a problem. We can store it once. But even a 100 megabyte model, if you're saving that every single uh, batch, then you're going to run into like problems really, really fast. Oh, we're nearly at the end. We're nearly at the end. You sound like Tom Hiddleston when he's Loki. Well, that's very flattering. Thank you. I was a big fan of the, the Loki series too. A big fan. It brought me some much needed enjoyment from the Marvel Universe. Okay, so 
We closed with an accuracy of like 97. Um, take that with a pinch of salt. It might be good, it might be terrible. We don't know yet. Uh, let's stop this and find out. So this is our, what is this? I'm not even running anything. Oh, I accidentally, this, this laptop's weird. I accidentally pasted in all of that code from earlier. <laughs> okay, right. So um, this script is what we just wrote. And let me show you what this does. So we import all of the things from before. Oh, actually this needs to be changed. Transform audio and load model. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna be lazy. Uh, I'm gonna be lazy and just copy it blindly so that I don't have to recode a bunch of boring functions for you guys. Um, what is new? Yeah, so predict. Okay, this is what's going on. We are setting, we're saying basically every 0.3 seconds, we're gonna capture the audio from my microphone and we're gonna send it through the neural network. We're gonna ask it to make a prediction. And then we are going to see whether, this shouldn't be in here. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna do this a hundred times apparently. <laughs> we're gonna make a prediction to see whether it's a clap or whether it's background noise. And then we're gonna, hopefully, let's, let's change this to, to 0 0.5. This seems like a really weird script that I wrote before. Apologies. Um, what's coding live without a little bit of embarrassment? Okay. So we have this. This is our model. This file, audio classifier. I cannot open it, but inside that is all of the data we've learned from training as a file. And all we have to do is load that back into our model. Our model is our audio classifier. So it's the exact same code as before. It's this thing, but this time we're not training the thing. We're just loading the data that it already needs. So it's like a config. So we have like the model itself, and then we have the weights and the weights are what's been learned. And they're just a list of numbers. It's literally like a spreadsheet of numbers that get loaded into the model as a con config file and the model gets initialized with all of its learnings. Imagine being born with all the knowledge you have now. That's exactly what this model is happening to this model. Um, okay, so we are opening a microphone stream and then we run the samples. Um, we record, wow, this is, this is a, this is difficult to see. We basically record a chunk of audio we then save it to the disk and then we sleep and then we load it again. That's odd. And then we run, we basically save the audio file to disk. Then we read the audio file from the disk and then we load that audio into the model as a spectrogram so that it looks just like our data. This should hopefully start to make sense. We've just trained the network to not understand audio, but to understand images like this. And so if we wanna give it something new to predict, we need to give it something new that looks like this, not something that looks like audio. So first we take our audio, we make a spectrogram the exact same way we did in training. We run it through the model, but the model has all the learnings from the training run and should hopefully be able to predict whether it's a clap or not. Now let's see how well this model has done. First time usually doesn't go very well. So let's see. Oh, what's happening? Um, shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Why is it doing that? What are we importing? This seems to be running training. Hmm. 
Hmm. Ah, it's here. This weird script is importing the class from the training script. Weird. Okay, from predict. Let's go again. And hopefully it should be saying that it is noise. Okay, so currently I am not clapping. Oh, I thought I was clapping then. I'll stay quiet. It doesn't like peaks of audio. So that means that it's probably learned too well to detect peaks of audio. And you can see as I raise my voice, it thinks I'm clapping. But if I do this, Now if I clap loads. <laughs> okay, it's not that accurate, but it is able to kind of tell the difference. Let's try it. Let's try this again. <laughs> and uh, let me zoom in for you guys so that you can see this. Mm. Okay. We're gonna run and I'm gonna just stay quiet and then I'm gonna clap and hopefully it should detect. Okay, so let's try me talking. It still thinks this is noise, but if I now clap while I'm talking, it may know the difference. It's also recording weird. It's recording in one second intervals. And so if there's like a spike in that second, it might think that's a clap. So we could probably get around that. Um, I think it's one second or half second intervals. So let's try, let's try, by the way, it worked. <laughs> it worked. So congratulations. If you made it through the whole live stream, I've been streaming for like nearly two hours. We've had one failed and it's learned to detect claps, kind of. So how would I improve this? I would probably improve this um, through... I would probably get higher quality claps to begin with. And then I would probably introduce more background noises, more peaks in the background noise data set so that there's a lot of things that look like claps but aren't claps in the background noise. Um, anyway, let's try and play around with this chunk duration. And let's have a look and see. So the music's playing, it doesn't think that's a clap. Something sounded like a clap to it, but mainly noise. So this is really good. And if I now clap, it's working. Well done, everybody. Amazing. It works. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. It has been a true pleasure to work on this with you guys. And um, maybe we can improve this on another live stream. I think we've made a ton of progress. I'm going to open source this code. You can find my GitHub over on my bio. Give me 10 minutes to open source it. If you want to play with it yourself, you can. I will try my best to include as much as I possibly can without uploading a ton of like audio files to the repo. So you can just look at the code and, uh, and play with it yourself. Um, just give me about 10 minutes to do that and then you can hop on. And uh, if you want to submit a PR and, and contribute to my clap detection model, you can. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. See ya.